Hello and welcome back. Uh, in this video today, we will be covering the NetLab Plus Ethical Hacking Lab series, uh, web pen testing with Nikto and OWASP Zap. Uh, so we're going to be dealing with uh, web application vulnerability scanners uh, using Nikto, which is a more command line driven um, tool, and the OWASP Zap, which is more graphical user interface. Um, now you may be wondering, and you, you know, you've seen this OWASP name from time to time using these labs. Um, so what is OWASP? Well, OWASP is a foundation. It stands for the Open Web Application Security Project. And they're also, um, you know, you'll, you'll find that they have a lot, of, they've created vulnerable machines or um, images and, and ISOs that you could load into virtual machines to use for practicing, you know, to um, do web pen testing like, like, like this. So essentially what we're doing, we're working with scanning one of their machines called the BWA, which, which stands for the broken web application. So it's, you know, it's a purposefully vulnerable uh, machine. So it's meant, they're essentially a foundation meant for uh, students and industry professionals to learn uh, web application hacking. So, and you'll find um, the OWASP top 10, and these are the top 10 web application security risks, uh, which is updated every year. Um, you'll usually find SQL injection at the very top of this list, uh, you know, broken, broken authentication, cross-site scripting, misconfigurations, broken access control. All of these things are essentially what we'll be looking for in our scans in the lab today. So I highly recommend you do some additional research on OWASP in the, in the top 10 uh, to become familiar with these different uh, security risks. Great, so let's go ahead and get started on the lab. So go part one, we will start with Nikto. We'll come to the Kali machine. Go ahead and launch terminal. And of course, the first thing that we could always do when exploring a new tool is to get help. So Nikto help, we can see uh, all the different options we have here. Um, I believe we're going to be working with listing plugins to see what kind of options we have. But definitely take a look at that and even try some of them out if you like. And the first thing we could do is just to do a default um, host scan. Uh, with no particular options, we could tell Nikto what host we want to scan. And this is the IP address of the OWASP EWA machine, dot 12. Go ahead and give that a scan. All right. And you see, we have a lot of things happening here. You see it's it's referencing this OSVDB. Uh, this stands for the Open Source Vulnerability Database. Essentially just a, a collection of um, vulnerabilities that, that this tool is referencing. We see a lot of um, software that's outdated. It tells you what, what the current is, or at least the current of this a particular version of um, Kali Linux that's running on this um, isolated environment. Okay, so that is essentially the results of that first scan. And of course, you would take a look through this and referencing the top 10, for example, you can see, okay, do I have anything that here, here that looks like it could be a proper vulnerability. So, you know, uh, maybe some cross-site scripting uh, opportunities, or even just noting that a version of the Apache web server is outdated um, can lead to particular vulnerabilities, depending on what version is currently installed. Um, we see it gives us the allowed HTTP method methods that we'll get into in a little bit. Okay. So now um, let's go ahead and run that list plugins option. 
and this is going to give us a little bit more details about what we can do to choose uh, specific types of scans. Let's see, we have all these different plugins. Uh, we could look for a robots file, which um, as you come to learn more about web app hacking, this is a very common tactic where um, you're looking at a robots.txt file, which is essentially a file on a web server that tells a search engine like Google um, what not to display in search results. So oftentimes uh, a penetration tester would look at that to determine, okay, what don't you want us to see, you know, and then you could kind of um, dig into that a little bit more. But um, I believe in this lab, we'll be looking at the messages plugin um, to check server versions. Um, we're going to be running a test that essentially tests the host with all these standard Nikto tests. And I believe we're going to be looking at um, outdated scanning for outdated plugins and also scanning with the HTTP options plugin, see what kind of options are available on the server. Okay, so yeah, that first one we're gonna do, the first plugins, you wanna make sure you do plugins with a capital P. And then we will run outdated. Then the host will be the same IP. Okay, so um, we saw similar information in the first scan, but this is an, just a good example if you really wanted to focus only on outdated um, software. It gives you only that information. And we could do the same with the HTTP, HTTP options plugin. And if you're following along this lab um, in the CIS 196 class, I noticed that the original PDF document had a dash in front of HTTP options. Uh, make sure you remove that um, as you don't need the dash after the uh, first plugins option. Okay, so in this case, it's a much more um, Simple scan, not a whole lot of results here, but this is exactly what we were looking for. So allowed HTTP methods. Um, so what are all of these? So you know you have git, head, post, options, and trace. Um, there's a really nice um, write-up from the SANS Institute that I found. And I'll go ahead and put this link in the um, description of this video as well. Because it would definitely be nice to reference this. Um, so just to go over what these messages are or these options are um, called methods, um, you see there's eight different methods for HTTP. Um, get, post, head, put, and delete, which we didn't see in the list, um, trace, options, and then also connect, which we also did not see in that list. Um, so just to briefly go over these, um, the get and post are used to request a web page. Um, so these are the most common. Um, head works exactly like get, but it's only receiving the headers, so not as much information. It doesn't receive the body of the, um, let's say, an HTML file. Um, so a downside of get is that it passes any parameters via the URL, and it's super easy to manipulate. So post is a little bit more secure, but also not completely tamper-proof, right? Um, the options method um, is essentially what we did by running this HTTP options. It asks the server, okay, what methods do you allow? Um, the trace method is mostly a developer tool. Um, so it allows a client to see how it requests, how the request looks when it finally makes it to the server. Um, but an attacker can use this to see how has the request changed and, you know, is there a firewall involved? Is it running through a proxy? 
gateways or other applications. So this is a way that an attacker could further gain information about um, your network and, and uh, what's happening on the server side. Um, now the most dangerous are put and delete. Uh, put will allow you to essentially upload a file. So, you know, uploading a reverse TCP payload um, would definitely not be good. So that's a very dangerous method and deletes, um, as it states, would allow you to remove uh, files from the web server. And then the connect method um, can be used to create an HTTP tunnel for requests. So if an attacker knows a specific resource, um, they can use that uh, to gain access to other resources. So that's a good brief overview of what these HTTP options and methods are. And like I said, I'll include a link to this in the um, description of the video. Okay, so moving on, we will run the messages command. Okay, and now here we see a particular um, vulnerability. Um, could be vulnerable to a remote buffer overflow, uh, which will would allow a remote shell. So that is a pretty high criti highly critical um, vulnerability there. And we'll go ahead and run standard tests plugin. Okay, so that scan is complete. And what you could see here is you come across these things like this might be interesting. So what it's doing is kind of um, going through different directory uh, indexing. So it's finding these directories that you could then access. There, there's even other um, Scanning tools like uh, called Durbuster, for example, and it's uh, just a way to enumerate through directories and gain more information about what resides on web servers. Um, you know, we found that uh, a WordPress installation was found, so that's useful information. HP my admin directory found, so we could potentially find um, the login page for the admin. Maybe do some try some brute force attacks there. That this is all a part of that information gathering uh, process. And what we could do now that we've gathered a lot of this information, we can add this to a report. And I'll, I'll put this to, um, in the example of the lab, a report.html that we'll be able to load up into a web browser for an um, easier way to go through all this information. Okay, so we'll do dash output. Output of that is going to be report.html. Okay, so as you can see, very similar output to what we've been seeing. And if we do ls-l, you see we now have this report.html here. So what we can do We could open up our files and we see the report.html. If we double click that, it's just going to go ahead and open up in a web browser. And you see we have a much more um, organized reporting here. So it gives us a the description, tells us which HTTP method is used, which is why that's important. So yeah, we'll go ahead and leave this open. We may come back and reference that um, in comparison to our scan with OWASP app as well. Okay, so I'll just go ahead and minimize that. So OWASP app, um, pretty similar, uh, but you're going to see 
that it gives you much more in terms of uh, graphical representation here. So we can open that by going to Applications, Web Application Analysis, and OWASP Zap. Okay, so once this opens up, we'll say, no, I do not want to persist this session. And very simply, we're just going to enter in the address of our victim machine, the OWASP BWA, and go ahead and press attack, and you'll see right away it starts scanning. Go ahead and maximize this, this menu up a little bit so we can see. So if we're looking at these tabs here, we see we have alerts, and this is where um, more detailed alerts and the critical level. Uh, you can already see there's an orange flag here. There's some yellow flags here, which are not as critical. All of this stuff is just flowing in. You, it, it's not usually this normal to see quite so many as we'll see here, but that's because you know this is a vulnerable machine by design. So obviously, we're going to see lots of different different errors and vulnerabilities. But if we're looking at the spider, you know. What this is essentially doing is it's spidering or crawling through this web server, much like a um, search engine like Google or Yahoo would do. Um, I remember when I first started using the internet, one of the first web web search engines I used was literally called Web Crawler. You know, so that that term of you know crawling the World Wide Web. It's it's still, you know, still exists here more in the um, vulnerability scanning uh, realm. So that's crawling that matching with specific alerts. We have these application error disclosures. And it, and it starts to give you more information, you know, about each possible vulnerability. So if you're on the you know, defensive side, and you're you're doing this vulnerability scan on your own network, on your own web apps. Um, you're looking for things that you need to remediate, right? You need you're looking for things where okay, I really need to update this because there's a vulnerability. Um, yeah, and that's essentially the end of the lab here. Um, it's you could see it's still going, so I encourage you to, to just let this finish out and just browse around, get get familiar, especially in terms of the CISA Plus exam. You want to get familiar with looking at vulnerability reports and being able to determine, you know, what's the issue or how do I fix this? You know, you can see here there's solutions uh, for all of these. So it's definitely great. This is a good experience to get familiar with um, looking at vulnerabilities and thinking about how to uh, fix them. So great. So that wraps up this lab. Uh, once again, we covered web pen testing with Nikto and o OWASP Zap. And uh, we demonstrated both in terms of uh, web app vulnerability scanning. So thanks again for watching. See you in the next one.